This is going to be a longer video. I'd like just to present you a few pictures, real samples, straight from the photo lab on these uh, films. Uh, and I have a bunch of cameras which are less expensive. Uh, these are film cameras and this all of them are zoom cameras, point and shoot. I want to say you don't have to go for the expensive ones like three, four hundred dollars with fixed lens and fancy fast lens 2.8 or so to get nice pictures. Now what I have here, it's pictures, like I said, straight from the lab. There is no editing whatsoever in this. It is, has not been digitalized in any kind. These are just paper from the lab. And if you look on internet, if you search for this or that camera, the guys will post on blogs or maybe a Flickr or Lomography or stuff like that pictures. But all those pictures are being thrown to Photoshop, to Lightroom, completely changed, uh, embellished, saturation, whatnot. This is the real image you are going to get from these cameras from the lab. So when you get your lab order, you will see these pictures, not what you see on internet on those blogs and whatnot. Uh, let me just get through this. Um, you see this, uh, this is one of the pictures. I'm not going to say which picture come from which camera. I'll just talk in a moment about the camera itself, but let's just uh, see the picture quality. So you know, I think you get nice colors. Uh, there's almost uh, always, uh, there's a quite sharpness, but it's not going to feel like a professional camera. Uh, let's just pass this one. This one has nice colors, was done with full zoom in uh, bright day, and it's very, very nice colors. I'm not sure if my, uh, Home camera will catch the pic the colors uh, accurately. A uh, city pictures, um, very nice color, very nice whites actually. It's really punchy and uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty uh, bright. Uh, that's a photo street in Montreal actually. It's a Chinese district. Um, give you an example. I never shot with flash and indoors without flash with these cameras there's no way it's no go you have to use the flash at that moment uh, that's what you see if you don't use the flash so uh, be aware of this most of the times i take pictures outdoors and i try to um, usually i would use uh, i would take pictures from my family so it's going to be portraits and usually i use the the zoom so that's just my preference and never with flash but you get the idea, it's just, I think, look at the color of the water here, it's just nice. And I have to say, these cameras, the idea behind the film is that digital, I'm not going to argue against digital. I think the, the professional digital cameras as of 2020 now, uh, these days, are much, perhaps much more performant than these cameras, no way. Uh, it's much better image, but that's not all, always about the best. Uh, you know, people are searching for the best in everything. It's all sometimes all about being natural, right? Being realistic. Um, yeah. So just throwing to you a few more pics to get an idea what you can get with uh, zoom cameras. Um, because it, it's not always, uh, it's not all about feeling the having the mechanical touch or being kind of analog if you want, analog trend you also need to get nice picture. If you don't get nice picture, you won't use that camera. So that's also important. Uh, yeah, local Toys R Us. Now, this one had a little bit of uh, a light fallout on the corners, a bunch of hands. Yeah, uh, gives you an idea. Sharpness wise, I'm going to say is, again, it's not going to look professional, but it's good enough. And these are four by six picks, so four by six paper prints. Um, before I start with this, let me just throw something in. Uh, this is a camera that I had uh, maybe 20 years ago and I just uh, gave up on it. It's a camera that today costs three, four hundred dollars and I'm think, uh, I guess I, it's climbing, the price is climbing. It's called Olympus Stylus MGU or sometimes, yeah, MGU or something like that, it's a weird name. It's a very compact camera, it's much, much smaller than this. This one, Konica, is the smallest of the bunch and one of the smallest of that time. And that Olympus still is even slimmer and smaller than this and also waterproof, has a fixed lens f2.8. And people are raving about it. Why? Uh, because when I look at the picture that I took back in days with this cam that camera, Olympus Stylus, to me, it doesn't look that uh, impressive. It's just, it's okay, but it, 
no, I, I, I will never spend two, three hundred dollars to get that camera and have this kind of pictures. No, no way. That's no way. That's in my face. That's on, uh, in Greece. Uh, it's a monastery there. So, uh, yeah, uh, that Olympus uh, may be fancy, maybe, but I think what's happening is that people are uploading pictures on blogs about that Olympus. There was a review that got a lot of views, a blog, and they modify those pictures. They throw them to Adobe Lightroom. It's just completely different image than what the camera actually takes. It's just completely different and makes people think that's the actual picture you are going to get with a camera, which I don't have to repeat it. It's not true. It's not a real picture. Let's just talk a little bit, just for the um, or sake of the, uh, if you want retro feeling or just the, yeah, just to get an idea what were this camera back in the days. Um, so all of them, they took film. I don't have film in there. You can see inside, it looks really, really nice. Uh, these seals with these cameras, they're, usually the seals are not a problem with this. A problem with the seals you'll find in SLRs. Back in the days, this is an SLR. I keep, it, I keep my SLR always in the Ziploc because I got fungus problems in the past because of humidity. So always, always keep this in the Ziploc bag. This one, much less of a problem, but if you feel there's humidity in your room and maybe you keep them in the basement, always zip them inside the Ziploc bag. Make sure it's dry when you put them inside. Um, yeah. So let me, let me just uh, spend some, maybe 20, 30 minutes. So uh, just sit down, uh, sit back and enjoy, get your popcorn and uh, check it out. Uh, I do have batteries in these three, not on this one, the Konica. This one is a little special because it has like a, if it, a brother or sister, I don't know what exactly the gender is, but it has another camera that is exactly the same. It's just that it haven't, doesn't have this kind of zoom switch. I will uh, turn it on right away. Um, why not? So it has a turn on button like this. And that's the uh, short, uh, it's like a, a 38 millimeter length and you can zoom it out and it gets pretty long. It has only two position. It's the only one that has only two position. This one, you can adjust the zoom length. Uh, also, if you turn it off, uh, uh, the lens fully extended, it will, it will come back at the same length. So that's interesting. It's just funny. I think it's a, um, it's just nice sometimes to look at this, uh, the way uh, they work, basically. Uh, this on-off button is really rare like this, position like that, and it's, I would say, uh, cannot say back in the days it's uh, easier to use. No way, you know, it's much harder to use. Um, let's just maybe open it. Usually, you notice I put tape on mine. There's, you, you notice these tapes here. Uh, let's just wait for the camera folks. Uh, there's two reasons, not three, two reasons. Well, actually, it's three reasons. Yeah, here you go. Uh, one of the reasons is I need to have more grip. It, it just doesn't. This is electrical tape, by the way. It's basic. Uh, this this plastic case don't have enough grip. I just like to have grip. And by the way, that Olympus Stylus doesn't have good grip on it. You can uh, drop it easily. The second reason is funny. Is when I started to use these cameras again, this is the uh, backdoor lock switch, and just I was just fooling around. It just felt like I want to grab the switch and open and I had a film inside. So I think at least the beginning is good to cover the switch so you don't mistakenly or if, if you give the camera to someone and he say like, oh, what's this switch? Oh, no, no, don't open it. Uh, too late. So that's one of the things. That's the second reason. And the third reason is just I cover the corners in case I've dropped them. Maybe I don't want them to scratch them or um, it's not going to protect from the, a crack, but it's just not to scratch them too easy. Uh, let's just see this guy here. Um, you notice when it comes to make a choice, one of the things I can tell you is that not all these cameras, they, they will all look the same, but not all of them have that much uh, of a nice picture. So you really have to perhaps purchase a few of them, test them and see which one you like to have uh, to take pictures with them, which one has nice pictures. The lens were really changing by the years. Uh, the quality of the lens, I mean, and it's it's really, you, for example, you can think a Nik Nikon of the same type, same era is also going to be good. Not necessarily. If you want my my subtle advice, 
Uh, I will try first to get Canon. I'm not necessarily a Canon fan. My digital cameras are not Canon, are red or Kodak. But I think Canon in this kind of camera, it's a nice first bet. It's a safe bet if you want to try things. And also I have in my channel, I have a playlist with uh, cameras, uh, with several videos, and I show how to grab a single roll of film, whichever uh, film you like to have, and how to switch it without uh, losing the picture. So how to maybe take five pictures from one camera, go in a dark room or just bathroom without windows, how to remove the film from that, throw it in there and keep doing the next exposure. Again, five pictures with this one, five, five. So you can use a single roll to check five cameras to see which one you like without uh, having to process five rolls or how, who knows how many. And speaking of film, uh, I think it's mostly this that people would get. Um, unless you are really picky on film. Uh, I think this one had better colors. It's a slower film, so I need more light. Uh, but I think the Ultramax has better colors than this one. Maybe I can show you an example, but it's difficult because I didn't take the same picture with the film. Uh, but I also recommend you, if you don't mind, a ISO 100 film, which is going also to be much most sharp, much finer grain, uh, the Kodak Ektar. So it's a little bit, a few more dollars, but it's, it has better colors perhaps even than the Ultramax and it's sharper, but you need more light because these cameras, perhaps you already know, are a little bit on the slow slide, slow side lens. So um, this one is the faster lens at uh, 38 millimeter focal length. It has f3.5. So that's the fastest of the, of the bunch. Now, do you really need a camera that has f2.8 like Olympus Stylus? Definitely no. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled to pay hundreds of dollars just to have a stop faster. Because you, unless you uh, want to shoot in uh, dim light or inside the ho uh, inside home, which I don't recommend with these cameras unless you use the flash, you really don't need to uh, pay hundreds of bucks just to have a, t a stop or two slower. I can tell you that perhaps this one, no, this one is also a 3.5 at the 38 millimeter. This one is about 4.7, I believe. And this one is five point something. I'd say maybe five is a little bit too slow and maybe also you get a bit uh, worse lens quality, but at f2.4.7 uh, at the, uh, the shorter focal length, don't be scared by that number. Go for it, give it a try. You may be surprised with the lens quality. All right, um, let's just get through these cameras. Uh, perhaps I will show you these uh, three, the Canon ones, basically. And uh, just uh, stay with me, uh, enjoy the video, and uh, don't be, I hope you are not in a rush. That's not the reason for making this video, speci specifically this video. Uh, I do have shorter videos, but this one I want just to enjoy it. Um, most of the times you will have a small light here, which will tell you if you are not using the flash, the ambient light combined with the uh, speed of the film, it's not enough. If this LED will flash, it means the ambient light is not going to be enough. You are going to get underexposed or it's going to uh, uh, increase the exposure time. So you have to keep the camera either very, very steady by hand, either on a tripod. And this one is the tripod for this guy here. Remember that thing. That's if you are not using flash. I really don't want to use flash because I like to have the colors to be more real. Um, so you need to work with this light. This one here, let me just turn it off or on. It has a nice uh, on off switch, which actually opens the flash as well. Has two lights. One is for the uh, exposure light. Let's see if it works. Oops, I didn't. For a second, let me just uh, try to figure out. Okay, maybe I'm going to switch, uh, if I remember well, switch the flash off. Okay, let's just see the two LEDs. So. Um, I do have a video which explains what means why uh, one, uh, one uh, LED may be flashing, other not, or may, may be flashing fast and stuff like this. But this one also tells you if the subject is too close uh, to the minimal uh, focusing distance, which usually is around 0.6 meters. 
I'm not sure one fit is that one fit equivalent uh, so this one is the only one that has two LEDs do you really need two LEDs no one is enough um, do I have a uh, yeah I don't have battery in this uh, this one I like it because you can turn it off the flash by this single switch and it stays off all the time if you are that kind of person who doesn't like flash uh, all others you need to turn the flash off at each use so this one you remember I had it off but now it's on again so you really need to press a few times now it's not always a problem because most of the times you are going to choose your light correctly and you are going to have the light here the LED steady not sure now it's steady uh, no it's not enough uh, enough light uh, in my room but usually you won't have to turn the flash off manually because you won't want uh, basically you will have enough light so the flash will not fire and you will see it in the uh, steady light here so you don't always have to uh, check the buttons and by the way uh, the Olympus also had you had to turn in the flash off every time um, let me just show you something on this one I don't remember how to open it yes. it's interesting the way it looks inside and it's pretty unique and let's see if I have enough light to show you this. Okay, here we go. So right now it's the extended uh, zoom. And if I would get it to the, uh, hopefully let's see it. Uh, yeah, here we go. So check, check out what is, what's happening when I extend the zoom. There's like a small lens that comes down and covers the base lens. Did you see the base lens? So it's really interesting, maybe from a distance you see it better. It's just the design way, it's uh, just interesting. And uh, uh, this is a slightly older model, perhaps um, from around 85 or so. Uh, these two others are from around 2000, 2002 or so. So um, yeah, this is a nice camera. I think uh, it's a little bit bricky, but it's easier to keep in hand. Usually the buttons are not really nice on these cannons. Uh, well, it's just basic button, not too hard to push down, uh, but you don't exactly feel like on a, maybe an SLR or so. Now this one, just don't know if it has the cannon. It doesn't matter actually, I can leave it like this. Uh, on the, this one, let's just turn it on. Let me show the zoom because not all videos online show the zoom. So you have the, this uh, uh, zoom button. Actually, you have this one has a zoom from uh, 38 to 105. It's a little bit longer than the other ones. And you notice the color, uh, the uh, lens coating. It's pretty nice. Um, you can turn. There's a few options. No, I didn't use the well on this one. Uh, just the flash on off and when you extend the zoom you actually can set the zoom at different distances it's not it's not only uh, the minimum and the maximum only it's really intermediate so let's just if you keep pushing on this it will fully extend but if you just give it a press it moves back or forward by a certain amount so this one being a longer zoom, it's more uh, steps. I would say uh, the base, of course, is 38 millimeter. If you push once, it goes to about 50 millimeter, 70, 90, and 105. Oh, actually, yeah, perhaps there's one more step. But you can, like I said, you can uh, adjust the zoom uh, level like that. Uh, these uh, viewfinders are usually okay, not the brightest, uh, but just good enough. I really don't like them when they are in the middle of the camera. I think this one, yeah, this one is side of the camera. So you can actually approach the camera closer to your eye because the nose comes by the side of the camera. Whilst on the viewfinders in the center, you, you bump you with your nose here and you cannot really get your uh, eye really close from the uh, viewfinder it's a little bit inconvenient i'm not sure perhaps it's more a technical thing to uh, put the viewfinder on the side so they didn't really do it uh, this one has a sm uh, small kind of uh, uh, kind of well which is easier to turn on and also easier to turn the flash off much faster 
However, the difference is that because the um, timer is on the same well as the flash, it means you cannot take a self pictures or put a timer on and also force the flash to be off. You cannot do it on this camera. On all others that I have, you can set it differently. So you have a button for the timer, a button for the uh, flash. This one, like I said, you can uh, switch the flash off by default. And I believe it has a timer somewhere. Yeah, here goes a small button. So you can do both. This one, I think if I remember well, yes, I don't have battery to it, but you can also set the timer separately uh, and uh, flash off separately as well. Uh, this one you can't, uh, sorry, what's this one? You can't, it's a simple model, has a much bigger and brighter viewfinder than others and uh, has uh, three focus positions, it's just like one, two, three, yes, that's it. Actually, it's four. The base, two, three, and the maximum zoom. Uh, it's a 76 millimeter max zoom. Um, one of the things, like I said, I like to do with this, let's just turn this one, not just one is my most pics are family port not necessarily portraits but family so uh, individuals and i like to use the zoom because uh and this is one of the very nice advantage of these cameras you can get that bokeh behind the person you can just focus on the uh, face of the person from a center distance maybe closer distance a few meters uh, and you can, it will, the film effect, it will just get you this uh, bokeh behind in the background, will blur the background and that you only, only get it into film cameras, not in the consumer point and shoot digital cameras. Those don't do it. The film do it and deface the, the image, the head of the person appears much, uh, you know, much clearer, much uh, more uh, present in the picture. So it's a very nice effect. That's one of the reasons I uh, do choose a zoom for these cameras to get them with a zoom. Um, so uh, I, perhaps uh, you may want to think about it and uh, use that thing. Let's just see how to charge, how to load a film. Let's try to open it and I will also tell you about the battery in a moment. My secret button. So it's like a, a safe. So let's open this thing. Usually all of these, yes, without exception, are really, really easy to load, but you need to find where is this pin where the film has to sit. So uh, it always has this pin in there and that pin will always go, this is the top of the film, the pin will always go at the bottom. It notice there's like a small tab and you need to align usually that tab with the, there is like a, a small notch into that pin right at the top of it. But usually you just, you don't think about it. It will just go in there, will kind of force, maybe don't force like to break it, but it will just, uh, let's see. Oh no, it doesn't. Let's try to align it a little bit. Uh, it goes there, uh, hold on a sec. Sometimes you also have a metal clip at the top, so you need to engage it. Try not to force. For some reason, that want to go. Hold on a sec. Okay, it he went. Maybe wiggle like I just did, but uh, try not to force, right? Because it doesn't, uh, uh, it doesn't have to break. And usually you will lose a few um, exposures, maybe two, one or two, but that's normal. And you just have to pass the film, Let's just roll it back. You just have to pass the film until it gets in there a little bit by, by like one inch, not even half an inch, one centimeter or so. So say so, just slide a little bit of film like that in there. By the way, this is a film I already exposed it all, exposed inside, so I, it's just a test film if you want. And then once you get it in there a little bit, just a little bit, you don't have to hang or anything, attach or anything. Just close the door and we'll see if the film is catching, you will see an one here. If the film doesn't catch, you will uh, uh, see still a zero. And then just take the picture and so on and so on. 
Now, uh, that's for the film. And uh, you know, always you have to wait for the film to either fully finish it. Most of these will automatically roll the film on the, at the end, all of them, uh, at least on the camera that I have here. Uh, but like I said, there is a way to remove the film, uh, they call it mid-roll in a uh, dark room. Uh, you will sometimes, I believe, some of these have a mid-roll uh, button that you um, can press. But if you, let's just say you expose half the pictures and you want to roll back the film to bring it to development, you can press on this button because it's going to roll the film into the canister. Uh, this button you only uh, press it at that moment otherwise the camera will automatically roll back the film when it's finished when you have exposed 24 or 36 pictures so usually you don't worry about this button you don't think about it it's not like on mechanical cameras this one was completely different you had to do it manually uh, so that's for the film usually like I said uh, when it's finished it will roll back and you just open this thing and uh, remove the canister, it will feel like the film is completely inside. Now, I'm opening it now because that's a test film that's already exposed, uh, is no longer useful, it's just for playing with the cameras. But usually you never open the camera and don't let your friend who doesn't know film camera open it if the film is still uh, has position in it because you are going to lose those exposure, you are going to lose the, the pictures you already did and you are going to lose all the exposures that are out of the canister. Uh, that's, uh, let's try to move this thing out. I also uh, check my other video how to remove films if you want mid-roll. Um, let's put this aside, let's talk a little bit about batteries. Uh, this one has Actually, the cameras I have here have two types of batteries. Uh, let's see, perhaps uh, this one. Yeah. Uh, there's um, one that sits. It's it's see. And by the way, you can if you are taking pictures and for some reason the battery goes flat and you have a spare battery, you can is you you are. Uh, it is possible to remove the battery and the film is still there and the counter is still there and put the new battery back in place within maybe 30 seconds, even one minute and it will keep taking pictures from that position on. So it can has a capacitor inside that keeps some power inside the camera uh, for you to switch out the battery, a bad battery. So uh, you should not worry about it. Uh, okay, I don't know what uh, I did mark on it. Uh, this one, let's see. So this one is the most usual battery you will find, uh, or you will need for this camera. It's a CR100, is my camera zone? 123A. It's a 3 volt battery. It's kind of a longer one. There's also a shorter one, but less often times. So most of the times you'll have this size of battery. I got it from a basically from a dollar store, but you can find them on eBay. Always pay attention how you insert the battery. Like the plus is going to be the tip, and sometimes you see the plus is going to be on the door stamped somewhere. But careful when you uh, you see that's funny. It got uh, it turned off and on. Uh, so careful when uh, you position correctly the battery. Uh, do I have one that has? Uh, let me see here. No, this one doesn't say, it will always say somewhere. Yeah, this one also has a picture gram, but sometimes you will see the battery uh, plus. Like I think on this camera it has a plus on the door here, which means the tip of the battery goes against the door. So careful with those things. Uh, all right, I think I got through what I wanted to say uh, to talk about it. Um, one of the things perhaps that's a little bit uh, uh, less discussed uh, about these cameras is that, like I said, there's perhaps three reasons why would you like, to, why actually would you keep taking pictures with one of these cameras? Because it's one thing to buy one from eBay for 10, 15 bucks, 
drawer all in it, shoot some pictures and then you put it in the drawer and never touch it again. And another thing, you keep taking pictures with this. Like I said, there's about three reasons you would do that. First is the mechanical feeling. The, just the feeling. It's really like a feeling, right? Like you like this kind of uh, cake and I don't like it, but I like this other cake, you don't like it. So it's really personal taste. It's just about them touching these things. And by the way, you never do this with a film. Again, I'm saying for the third time, this one is already exposed. I just uh, use it as a test film. It's one of the reason is just touching this. It's just feeling like you, you, it's more than just pressing on a button, taking a picture. You have to load it, take it to the lab store. And by, uh, and by the way, labs, uh, a development of this, I'm in Canada. Uh, these films cost me around more or less $10 Canadian and developing um, 24 or I'm not sure what's the difference, 24, 36. The developing it's around, I would say between 15 and $20. So it's a little bit on expensive side, but you are not doing a lot of picture either. So one of the reason, first reason for using this camera is um, getting that mechanical feeling. Uh, the, perhaps something people don't really tell enough is it's, okay, the second reason, sorry, I'm just uh, getting my ideas. The second reason is to have nice pictures. Like I said, if the pictures doesn't look good, you will not use that camera for sure. So really find one that takes nice pictures and enjoy it. It's, it's just the pleasure of seeing an app's pictures. And the third, third thing that will make you keep using a camera is actually, you will be surprised, is the way the camera feels in hand. It's, I cannot, you, you just can't, cannot get that from a video, from watching someone showing cameras or a pictures or a blog or something reviewing and saying what amazing camera. It can be amazing, but if you feel like it's too heavy or maybe it's too bulky or maybe I cannot get it into my pants, uh, into my pocket, you will perhaps the next time you are not going to gra grab this camera out, uh, going out and taking picture. You are going to leave it there and maybe take your tiny digital one. So finding a camera that's nice to keep in hand, is nice to handle, is nice to carry along, just really that basic. That's important because that's one of the factor, and I, I like, like I said, it's one of the big factors that will have you keep using that camera, besides the picture quality and besides the mechanical feeling. So think about it when you look for a camera uh, and try to uh, hopefully find one that has nice picture and that's also nice to carry along with you in your travels or just going uh, out uh, and take a pic with your family and friends. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this. Um, it's not, shooting film is not shooting better pictures than digital. It's not about digital film war, which I think it's over quite a while ago. It's not about that. It's just about a different feeling. And also sometimes it's about having less pictures just like back in the days, we had 10, 20 pictures from a trip and we still enjoy those pictures. While the digital, we throw them on a computer by thousands and we forget about them. We never even print them on paper. So it's a different experience and it's just about a pleasure, like a hobby if you want. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this. Uh, any comments in the uh, below section, your suggestions, your experience. Thanks again.